As you all know, the Cluck and Bell Farm raid was recently added into GTA Online, and it rewards you for $500,000 for about an hour's worth of work. But we can make it even faster. See, in the career challenges section for the raid, there is a tier 4 challenge stating you must complete it in under 45 minutes. However, in today's video, I'm going to show you how I technically completed it in under 35 minutes. Trust me, you're gonna want to see it. Now, there's just a few things I need to mention before I break down the speedrun. First off, with this raid, I am playing by myself. I'm not exploiting any glitches whatsoever, and I will be playing every mission on easy mode. Because if you didn't know, the difficulty doesn't actually affect the payout of the Cluck and Bell Farm raid at all, so this basically just makes it easier with no downside. Secondly, I will for the most part be using an HSW Hakutu Drag throughout this run as my main vehicle, so if you're on PC, you will be slower because of this, however, the regular Hakutu Drag, Vigilante, or any other faster vehicle should be good enough. And finally, when it comes to the 45 minute tier 4 challenge, the actual time that Rockstar measures is the time you spend within missions. The way this works is that GTA will only measure in between the time when you gain access to your character, right here and up until the final green mission complete screen comes up, right here. But in this speedrun I used a secondary timer that also recorded my time in between missions and in menus. This difference is how I technically get a time of 35 minutes, but just wait until the end and you'll see what I mean. But without further ado, let's get into the speedrun. So we start off where every Cluck and Bell farm raid begins, outside the Vespucci police station. And like I said before, I am playing this on easy mode, obviously make sure to stack up on your body armor and your ammo before you get started, and then hop into the first mission. Like I said earlier, I start the timer as soon as I gain access to controlling my character and then head over and hop on my bike to get into the mission. Slush Fund is probably the easiest mission in the whole entire raid and there's really not much more optimization about it. It's basically just drive over to location A and B as fast as possible, get the money from the washing machines and drive back. The only other way you can really make this faster is if you can get by without shooting the enemies or by killing them as fast as possible. Apart from that, no real difficult tactics, just play the game well pretty much. Now this run was my 10th time attempting the speed run and pretty much the Slush Fund time was always around 5 minutes and 10 seconds or so. Like I said, there's not much optimization left with this mission, so each time is going to be around 5 minutes 10 seconds to 5 minutes 30 seconds, and this time I finished with 5 minutes and 24, which is not terrible. Now, to me, the most annoying thing about this whole entire raid is that in between missions, you can't just go ahead and start up another one straight away. You have to wait for Vincent to phone call you before you can actually go ahead and do the next one. And not only that, but you have to head back to the yellow circle outside the Vespucci police station every single time. If anyone else knows a better way to do this, please let me know, because it is a massive time loss. In fact, these in-between missions, waiting for Vincent to contact you, spawning back your agency, going to the police station again, adds up honestly close to like 7-8 minutes to the total speed run time. So it's quite annoying. But with that rant out of the way, it's time to get onto the second mission, breaking and entering. Now, the strategy for this mission is to always go for the laptop location first. This is mainly just to save time driving. The terabyte location is in between the laptop and the train, so it makes sense to go to the laptop first, then the terabyte, and then obviously the train at the end. Now, getting the laptop is a bit of an RNG. I believe there are 10 different locations where it can spawn, and if you're using a vigilante, the lock-on missiles will actually go onto the guy that you need to kill to grab the laptop. If you don't have a vigilante, like me, the best chance you have is just riding around, knowing the locations off by heart and trying to find him. Realistically, it's not that much time loss if he's in a bad spot, maybe up to a minute at most. You just need to keep your eyes open and find the guy that's usually next to an arcade machine or in one of the stalls somewhere. Next up, we're going to be tackling the terabyte. Now, this can spawn in one of three locations, but they're all in a relatively similar area. So just check your map and make sure you're going to the right one. Now, the best strategy for dealing with the drones outside is to use sticky bombs. Arguably, this is a bit riskier because you can blow yourself up, but if you have good aim and good timing, you can simply throw sticky bombs, explode them in midair, and the drones will go down in one hit. But if you are a bit afraid of using the sticky bombs, just use a weapon with high damage and a lot of ammo, like the Combat MG Mark II or a minigun. Once the drones are defeated, head inside and pick up the hacking device, and then it's over to steal a train. Now, like with any speedrun, you're going to want to take the most efficient path to get to the next location. And these are the ones I like to use, but realistically, as long as you head directly there, it's not going to be much of a time loss. Once you're at the train though, there's a few things you can do to make this faster. First of all, I like to throw a sticky bomb at the two guys in front to take them out quickly, and then I like to blow up the cars with either a RPG or some other type of explosive. This will hopefully get you the key faster, and the goal is once you get the key, run, pick it up, and just take the train. There's no need to kill the enemies, it's just a waste of time. Once you've hijacked the train, the mission is basically over. You need to make sure to press right on the d-pad when the red circles come up to make sure your train doesn't get slowed down, but realistically you're not going to fail here. I don't think I've come close to dying even once once, even without shooting the enemies following you, so you should be pretty good. And with a bit of luck and a lot of skill, I managed to complete the second mission in my best time ever. 
58 seconds time save. Some of best segments, 44, 44. Okay, this is the one. This is the run, boys. Once again, I waited for Vincent to call me, headed back to the police station and got started on mission number three, concealed weapons. In this mission, the game gives you the option to go to three separate locations, A, B, or C. For this speed run, going to location A is always going to be the fastest and it doesn't even matter having worse gear in the finale because we're going to be doing it stealthily no matter what. Now, feel free to follow the path I take to get to location A. I believe this is the most efficient one I've found. Please let me know if you have something else, but this will get you there in just over a minute, which is pretty quick. The strategy that I've found to be the fastest is to take out the first two guys with a suppressed weapon, followed up by throwing two sticky bombs over the blue fence, killing most of the guys in there, and then taking it down everyone else with the best weapon you have. I'm sure this could still be improved upon, but it's good enough for now. Once everyone's dead, go ahead and search the cars for your gear. If you get lucky, you'll get it in the first car. If not, it's a bit of time loss. After that, pick up the weapons, get back on your bike, and head back to the lockup. Make sure when you're here, you pull out your phone and text Vincent that you want to confirm the weapons and gear as fast as possible. And with that, mission over. I managed to complete this one in a pretty good time as well, just over 18 minutes. Now on to mission four, hit and run. Very similar to the last one, Rockstar gives you three options A, B, and C to go to. And similarly to last mission as well, we're gonna be going to location A. The reason why we want to do this is because it is closer to Polito Bay where we will be delivering the vehicle after we steal it. Once you arrive at the location, it's as easy as taking out one guard, shooting this box on the side to unlock the garage, stealing the car and dipping. Now the big downside with location A is there is a 50-50 chance you get either a really good vehicle or a really bad one. Specifically, the one I get in this speed run, the Declassy Tulip is horrendous. The reason why is that its suspension and handling is just beyond god awful, and when you're driving on the train tracks, which is the most efficient route to get to Polito, it bounces and bobbles all over the place, so usually you have to slow down quite a bit to control it. This used to be a run ender for me, but I've managed to find a way to make it a bit more bearable in the finale. But like I said, once you've collected it, head on up to Polito, deliver it to the garage, and once you leave, take this car outside and drive north. And even with it, terrible car, I managed to get a new personal best, having this mission end 23 minutes and 52 seconds. On pretty good track for the run. Now comes the most important and most annoying mission in the whole entire run disorganized crime. Now before we get to the annoying part, I'm actually going to show you a discovery that is actually really, really cool. So the usual way this mission plays out is you go ahead and hack two vans to find a warehouse location to go ahead and steal a keycard and destroy some trucks, blah, blah, blah. However, I found you can completely skip the vans and just go to the warehouse locations. Now I will admit it is not foolproof, but through countless testing, I have found that on average it is at least 20 to 30 seconds faster than going to the vans. So what I do is I follow this route on my bike checking each garage. And even though you don't have the location from the vans, if you hop off your vehicle and walk up to the garage, it will let you in if it is the correct one. Now, side note, you have to have done this mission before for this to work, but I'm sure most of you have already. Now, just a quick tip, if you are using a bike and driving through this alleyway, there are two gates that if you just drive into, you will crash. So what I do is I make sure to have tear gas on my character. And before I drive into the gate, you throw a can of tear gas at it to open the gate and it won't slow you down. Now, unfortunately, I got the last garage location, which means I could have saved even up to another 30 seconds on this run. But nevertheless, once you head inside, it's the typical strategy you do for most stealth runs. Kill the two guys, sabotage the trucks, and basically just don't let the witnesses survive. Once that's done, go ahead and do the most annoying part of the mission, searching for the key card. Now, by my testing, the key card location is completely random. It is in one of the 16 different lockers within inside this building. So if you get it on the first one, you save a lot of time. If you go on the 16th one, you lose a lot. I haven't done the actual calculations, but I imagine you could easily lose up to five minutes just in here searching through dumb lockers. And somehow I got lucky this time, like really lucky. I know that they usually spawn on the other side for me based on my past times, but it's completely random from what I'm aware of. So I just gotta hope. If we get it within the first four, we are good. Oh my God, first one. <laughs> I've never had that happen before. Okay, this is the run. This is the fucking run. I've never got it first time before. That saves fucking minutes. That genuinely saves minutes on this run. Holy fuck. This is the one. This is the one. Yes, as you can tell. I was very excited. But once you collect your keycard, make sure to go ahead and erase the CCTV footage from the office. And after that, you should be good. If the truck spawns outside, you've completed the stealth setup correctly and you can go ahead and go on to the finale. Although I will say the aggressive approach is still pretty easy to do quickly. It's just a bit slow because of enemies respawning, etc. That might be the biggest single time save I've ever done in this speed run. That is fucking ridiculous. Nearly three minutes. So over three minutes, right? Yeah, it'll be over three, nearly four minutes. Oh my my fucking god, that is absurd! I am so happy. First try, that's just 
That is just fate. That is just absolute fate right there. Holy fuck. Okay, we have to do this this time. We have to. It's 1 a.m. <laughs> this is my third run today, which doesn't sound like much, but I only started at like 8 p.m. We've got this. We have got this. With nearly four minutes saved from my previous best run and a sum of best segments down to 43 minutes and 20 seconds, I was on track for an absolute diabolically amazing time. I know that's an oxymoron, just ignore it. So the final raid, yes, it is difficult, However, there isn't really much punishment you get for doing this mission. Even if you mess up the stealth and go into aggressive, you can still complete this pretty quickly. However, I'll show you my most efficient stealth route that I've found to do this extremely fast. First of all, I like doing a lot of these missions in first person mode. I just find it easier to aim, just a personal preference, you can do it just as easily in third person as well. But you're gonna wanna come up here, headshot this guy first in front of you, then go to the guy on the right, and then finally to the guy on the left. After that, shoot the panel straight away and head inside instantly. Once you're inside, wait for this guy to get just around the corner and then shoot him in the head. Go around the corner, shoot the guy to the left first, and then the two guys to the right. Make sure to be accurate and shoot them in the head, otherwise you could fail. After that, what I like to do is shoot these two guys down the corridor. It's a bit difficult and far to aim, but you can do it. Then you need to shoot the guy to the left first because he will know notice it and then the guy to the right. If you do this quickly enough you'll not alert any guards and you'll be fine. After that you can simply head into the first lockup room because they will not find you. Once you're in here it's pretty easy, go down, kill the guard and the two scientists and then pick up as much supply as you have to. I was gonna say you can but you literally have to get all of it. Then head back upstairs, go into the main room and take out the guy in front of you. After that simply slide in the keycard to the garage door and then turn around and wait for a guard behind you. He's gonna walk in and you can shoot him pretty easily. Then head inside. Once again take out the two guards quickly and then go ahead and get the loot. It is always at the back two locations, the back left and the back right. However, the back right crate is sometimes in the middle, but it's always the back two every single time, at least with my testing. And if you picked location A for the loot like I did, you have a crowbar already on you, so you do not need to pick one up in this room. Once you're back outside, make sure to take a look for the keys on the desk here, just in case, because you will need to pick them up. But if not, head into this room and take out the guard when he walks past you. If you've done everything that I have so far, there'll be no one else in this room, so you can kill him very easily. Then simply walk around the corner, kill this guy here, but you have to be careful because there is sometimes a guard that is looking for him. If he is, just wait until he moves away, but then go ahead and take out the final two guards and you're done. For me, the key spawned on this desk here, so I went back to pick it up and then I headed into the office. Once you're in the office, connect to the computer to start hacking, pull out the hacking device and walk around until you get the green light. The locations are pretty much always in the same spot, It'll be one in the middle of the room here, one down the side of the chicken conveyor belt here, and then one back to the other room around here. If not, just follow the guide. It's pretty simple just to follow the beeping sounds. Once that's done, you'll have a code for the safe. Go ahead and open it up, and then you can leave the facility. To get outside, simply shoot this electrical box in the garage door will open. Then you're going to want to hug the right-hand wall, walk around the side, kill this guard in front of you next to the truck, kill the guy next to the other truck, the guy near the bin, the guy near the garage door, and finally you want to wait for this guard to walk away from his other comrades a little bit, then take him out as well. Then head on into the garage and pick up your garbage vehicle, or hopefully for you, not your garbage vehicle. Once you're out, drive right through the gap in the fences and head down the train line. Now, once you get a bit far down, there's going to be one police officer that will see you, so you need to stop a bit ahead of him, line up a headshot, and take him out. Originally, I thought you had to wait until Sandy Shores to call in your personal vehicle. However, if you drive up to this little white house here, you can actually call it in there. So simply face away from the white house, call it in, and your bike or other vehicle will spawn just on this dirt mound behind you. You. Once you get that, it's basically just driving home and not getting caught by the cops. Really, really easy, in fact. Once again, I'll show you the rough route I take. I did mess up a couple of times, which lost me about 20 to 30 seconds, but it was still a really good time overall. If you have a fast vehicle like this or a vigilante, the chances are cops are not going to find you. And since we're on easy mode, we have three star cop level instead of four, which makes things a little bit easier. All you have to do now is drive back to the lockup and the whole entire raid is over in under 45 minutes. There we go. 43 minutes and 14 seconds. Holy shit, nearly a five minute time save. Genuinely, if I didn't have those two crashes at the end, that could have been five minutes off my last best. Holy shit, that is nuts. That is absolutely fucking ridiculous. What a time save and what a fucking speed run. Now, that 43 minutes and 15 seconds is including time in between missions on the loading screen, etc. So what I'm going to go ahead and do now is go in and basically calculate how much time was spent in those loading screens and see how fast I completed this in terms of the missions itself, because I think it might be under 40 minutes, but I am just beyond hyped. Leave a like for that, please. Come on. 
So I went ahead and did what I promised. I took this speedrun and put it into my editing application, Adobe Premiere Pro, and cut out all the bits in between missions. So I only used the bits from when I gained control of my player character to the end green screen of each mission, and I cut out everything in between. And do you want to guess what the end time is? Well, I did promise you a sub 35 minute speedrun in this title and thumbnail, and... I delivered. Give or take a couple of seconds for margin of error, this speedrun came to 34 minutes and 41 seconds. If you don't want to believe me and think I'm lying, fine, I don't really have any reason to, you can calculate it yourself in the future if you want to, but yeah. If Rockstar gave us a way to quickly replay these missions without having to wait for a phone call and going back to the goddamn police station each time, there's a genuine chance you could complete this in about 30 minutes consistently with a few more tactics found, which means 500,000 that quickly is just unbelievable. And another little thing I found out is that typically when you do this you have a 48 minute cooldown. However, whether Rockstar accounted for this or not I don't know, if you switch between player characters, because each account has two characters, you can play this back to back. Which means if you're completing it in under 48 minutes and doing it back to back, you can do this consistently without having like much wait time at all. Making this method making you nearly a million dollars an hour, which for a new character if you don't have any businesses, is one of the best money making methods in the game. Well guys, I'm glad you enjoyed that speedrun it took me a good amount of hours practicing and finding different methods and getting better to achieve this so like i said earlier i'd really appreciate if you leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more fun content like this and if you want to see the full speedrun unedited it will be over on my second channel but apart from that my name has been like Dan, and i'll see you next time